come up with some talented passers and receivers to go with the Big Green's feared running attack. And the Irish fans are optimistic as the first game approaches. The Fighting Irish are braced for an early test as they entertain the Boilermakers of Purdue to open the season. Picked as a Big Ten power, Jack Molenkopf's Boilermakers will feature the golden arm of Bob Greasy, who last year led Purdue to a stunning upset win over Notre Dame. The Irish are set to unveil their own quarterback, an 18-year-old sophomore from Butler, Pennsylvania, Terry Hanratty. With the enthusiastic Notre Dame fans watching, Terry Hanratty throws the ball for the first time as a member of the Irish varsity. On the other end is another sophomore named Jim Seymour, completing a 42-yard play. The Irish of 1966 are not a team to trail for very long. Nick. Two bang-bang, back-to-back long plays, and the first quarter score reads 7-7. Seven to seven. In the second period, Terry Hanratty has the Irish moving again. He lets go of the long aerial, and Jim Seymour makes a great catch 41 yards away. But the Boilermaker defense forces a field goal attempt. Jim Ryan's boot is wide of the mark, and the score remains deadlocked. The Irish take over again. Hanratty, who's proving himself under fire, looks to pass. He hurls a spiral deep toward Jim Seymour. This 19-year-old split end robs unmolested for the final yards, completing an 84-yard scoring strike. For sophomore Jim Seymour, it's quite a career start as he makes his third reception of the game. The Irish take a 14-7 halftime lead. Near the end of the third quarter, Notre Dame tries again. Hanratty's jump pass finds Nick Eddy open behind two blockers. He weaves his way downfield, completing a 16-yard play. The quarter ends, and on the fourth play of the final period, our slow-motion camera catches Terry Hanratty behind good pass protection. Final yards for a 39-yard touchdown. Notre Dame jumps to a 20-7 advantage. Greasy tries to get Purdue back into the contest. He throws a 27-yard strike to Jim Finley, deep in Irish territory. From the 16, Greasy goes to the air again. This time, he finds Jim Byrne open on the two. Greasy calls on Terry Williams for the final yards. He dives over for the score as Purdue gets close once more, trailing 20-14. Near the end of the game, the Boilermakers are back on the attack. But Greasy can't find anyone open. He's hit, fumbles, and Notre Dame recovers deep in Purdue territory. From the seven, Hanratty tries to put the game out of reach. With our slow motion camera rolling, watch Terry Hanratty as he finds a man open in the end zone. It's Jim Seymour, and he makes a leaping grab for his third touchdown of the game. Jim Seymour's three TDs and 276 yards, both new Notre Dame records, lead the Fighting Irish to a 26-14 victory over Purdue. And Irish fans are excited about Coach Parsegian's new wide-open offense. Notre Dame is now ranked fourth in the nation as the Fighting Irish invade Evanston, Illinois to battle the Wildcats of Northwestern. This game marks the first return visit for Notre Dame coach Ara Pasigian since he left the Evanston campus in 1963 to take over the reins at South Bend. All-America candidate Nick Eddy is off to a great start for the Irish. Lightning strikes early in the first quarter as Eddie weaves his way through the main body of Wildcats. The six-foot senior from Lafayette, California, is off on a 56-yard touchdown run that blasts the Irish into a 7-0 lead. 
Last week, a pair of Notre Dame sophomores, quarterback Terry Hanratty and split end Jim Seymour, made headlines in their first varsity game. The talented teenagers continue their heroics against Northwestern. Although only two starters return from last year's offensive line, the interior wall provides excellent pass protection as Hanratty passes the Jim Seymour in the end zone. But Notre Dame is offside, and the touchdown doesn't count. It's still seven to nothing after one period. After crossing midfield for the first time, Northwestern botches a pitch out, and linebacker John Pergeen recovers for Notre Dame. Terry Hanratty, who passed for 304 yards and three touchdowns the previous week, sparks an Irish drive with a toss to Jim Seymour. Against Purdue, Seymour set Notre Dame records for receptions and yards gained. The standout from Berkeley, Michigan, takes this toss for 17 yards. The Wildcats are having a tough time getting near the cool teenager. On a square out pattern, Hanratty finds Seymour for 12 more yards to the Northwestern 14. Notre Dame is a sound ground attack to go along with its fast developing air show. On a draw play, Rocky Blyer runs roughshod for nine yards. Fullback Larry Conjar rams across for the touchdown. The conversion fails, but Notre Dame is staked to a 13 to nothing lead over Northwestern. The Irish continue to be the aggressor under the slick play calling of Terry Hanratty. The splendid soft passer spots Jim Seymour all alone. What a terrific combo these two make. Hanratty's pinpoint accuracy is making a shambles of the Wildcat secondary. Terry changes partners this time with a 12-yard pitch to Rocky Blyer. Hanratty, who's completed 10 of 13 passes so far, pegs for Nick Eddy. But John Cornell intercepts to kill the threat. Notre Dame's lead is still 13 to nothing at halftime. The third quarter finds the Irish up to their old tricks. Terry Hanratty on the rollout option, hangs a pass to Jim Seymour. The Wildcats are using a man-to-man -man defense against the short passes, but it's not enough to contain Seymour. Hanratty drops back, and guess who he's aiming for? Jim Seymour stretches that six foot four inch frame of his to make this reception. The Irish are on the Wildcat 12. The give is to Rocky Blyer, who stampedes to a touchdown. A two point conversion raises the ante to 21 to nothing Notre Dame. Later, Northwestern is forced to give up the football. Tom Shane takes it on the 34. And he's off to the races. Behind a wall of blockers, Shane scampers unmolested for 66 yards and an apparent touchdown. But hold everything. Notre Dame is penalized for clipping. And the score remains Notre Dame 21, Northwest to nothing at the end of three quarters. With guard Tom Regner watching, the Irish make it 35 to nothing in the final period. Then Northwestern's Bill Melzer fires a pass to Roger Murphy for the Wildcats' only score of the game. Notre Dame, relying heavily on the passing and receiving of its budding sophomore stars, Hanratty and Seymour, remains undefeated by trouncing Northwestern 35 to 7. Fighting Irish have now scored 61 points in two games as the Black Knights of West Point invade Notre Dame Stadium. Both teams are undefeated and both are relying on stubborn defenses to stop the opposition in this 38th renewal of a great rivalry. The Irish test Army secondary early as Terry Hanratty passes to Jim Seymour for a 19-yard pickup in the opening period. Notre Dame's top ground gainer, Nick Eddy, gets the call, and he bolts to the Army 26. Displaying a balanced attack, the Irish turn Larry Conjar loose for 14 rough yards up the middle. 
Five plays later, Rocky Blyer leaps over left tackle for the score, completing a 54-yard drive. The Irish prove they can gain both in the air and on the ground against Army's defense for a 7-0 advantage. Army's ball as Carl Wiesner runs smack into 270-pound Kevin Hardy. The ball squirts loose, and Pete Duranko recovers for the Irish. The Notre Dame offense takes over, and that's the signal. The Baby Bombers connect for a 33-yard touchdown. The Fighting Irish now lead 14-0. An Army drive carries into Irish territory, but Coach Barsegian's defense halts the effort, and the men from South Bend take over. Harry Hanratty doesn't waste any time putting Jim Seymour to work. It's Seymour's 25th reception of the year. Good for 14 yards. From the 36, Hanratty looks to pass, but decides to run. The young quarterback takes off around right end for 11 yards. Watch fullback Larry Conjar contain the defensive left end as Hanratty speeds around the block for the touchdown. Notre Dame pulls ahead 21 to nothing at the end of the first period. Army's Jim O'Toole throws to Notre Dame's Jim Smithberger. Watch the crisp blocking clear a path as Smithberger returns the interception to the West Point three. the successful Notre Dame scissors play with Nick Eddy backing over right tackle to widen the Irish lead to 28 to nothing. Army fails to move the ball and the Irish take over. Terry Hanratty's 18-yard pass is completed to Kurt Hennigan on the Army 45. Notre Dame is on the move once more. Hanratty, who is completing better than 50% of his passes this year, connects with Nick Eddy on the 30. Hanratty crosses up the cadet defense with a draw to Nick Eddy. Eddy powers his way for nine more. The Baby Bombers team up once again as Hanratty fires to Seymour on the Army three. Irish are close. The final yards go to Nick Eddy, who scores his second touchdown of the day. The powerful Irish offense has blasted to a 35 to nothing halftime lead over Army. Ara Persigian rests his offensive stars in the second half and watches the Irish defense completely dominate the action. Here's number 81, Alan Page at work. Again, Page is in the middle of the play, stopping this run. No room on a draw play. Tom Shane intercepts to stop a threat. Kevin Hardy and Alan Page are the wrecking crew. Pete Duranko and Kevin Hardy end this merry chase. First, Alan Page. Then, it appears to be raining Irish on the Army. A tremendous performance by the Irish defense, plus the fireworks of Hanratty and Seymour, carry Notre Dame to its most one-sided victory ever over the Army, 35 to nothing. The Irish are now ranked number two in the country as the Tar Heels of North Carolina invade Notre Dame Stadium to try and stop the fleet Nick Eddy. Pete Duranko will lead the Irish defense as Notre Dame looks for its fourth straight win. Terry Hanratty pulled a muscle in his arm during the previous day's practice, but the Tar Heels don't know it. The splendid South is on target with Don Gemitter for 16 yards. The handoff goes to fullback Larry Conjar, who runs to daylight and picks up a first down on the North Carolina 30. 
Notre Dame's All-America candidate, Nick Eddy, follows suit. Nick's fancy footwork helps account for 16 more yards. The Irish temporarily have shelled their passing attack. This is Conjar again, finding running room straight up the middle. One yard is all that's needed for the touchdown, and Larry Conjar makes sure the Irish get it. The play caps a 73-yard drive that thrusts Notre Dame into the driver's seat, seven to nothing. In the second period, that big Irish defense closes in on Tim Cards and dumps the Tar Heel quarterback for a loss of 15 yards, and Notre Dame takes control. There was some question whether sore-armed Hanratty would play at all today, but the Irish field general is on the beam with Nick Eddy at the Carolina 43. The Tar Heel defense receives another jolt as Hanratty hands to his fullback, Larry Conjure, who carves out 20 yards. Conjar from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, is performing yeoman duty in this opening half as he plows for a first down. Let's watch the All-America form of Nick Eddy as the 195-pounder batters his way inside the Carolina Five. The 55-yard drive culminates with Larry Conjar slamming into the end zone for his second touchdown. Notre Dame boosts it into 13 to nothing. Later, North Carolina has a foothold on Irish turf when halfback Dick Wozolowski fumbles away a handoff, and Notre Dame's Kevin Hardy recovers. The only time in this game that North Carolina doesn't have three men covering Jim Seymour, Hanratty winds up and hits his favorite target on a 56-yard scoring play. successful bomb makes the scoreboard read Notre Dame 20, North Carolina nothing at intermission. The Tar Heels, who've won only one of 13 previous contests with the Irish, by Notre Dame's pass defense airtight. John Pergine hijacks a deflected toss and returns 19 yards. The interception sets the stage for one of the most electrifying runs of the season. This is Nick Eddy juking his way downfield. With the help of some timely blocks, the final one by Jim Seymour, Eddie roars to a 52-yard touchdown. Notre Dame climbs to a 26 to nothing advantage over the Atlantic Coast Conference representatives. After Eddie's touchdown, Coach Arapasigian calls in his talented reserves. Coley O'Brien zips a swing pass to Bob Gladio, who's off to the races. The sophomore speedster makes quite an impression as he turns in a brilliant 55-yard run. But hold everything. Notre Dame is detected clipping, and the ball is brought back to the North Carolina 42. The teams switch sides for the fourth quarter, and Coley O'Brien changes partners. The sophomore passer spots fullback Paul May for a gain of 25 yards. These boys are really putting on a show. O'Brien fakes to his fullback and pitches out to Bob Gladio, who sweeps into the end zone. The climax, the scoring parade. Notre Dame's ground power more than compensates for the limited aerial fireworks. The Irish stay unbeaten by whitewashing North Carolina 32 to nothing. crowd ever to watch a football game in Oklahoma turns out as the unbeaten Sooners battle the Fighting Irish who are now ranked number one in the nation. Both teams feature high scoring machines backed up by a great defense. Sooners quarterback Bob Wormack has thrown 58 passes so far this season without a single interception but the Irish defense ends that streak quickly as Jim Lynch picks off the aerial. The first quarter ends in a scoreless deadlock. After the Irish's first four games, 
Terry Hanratty has thrown for more yards than such Notre Dame greats as Johnny Lujak, Frank Papuka, or Darrell LaMonica. More than they did in their entire top season. This one to Rocky Blyer. Blyer, Notre Dame's third leading rusher, runs to daylight and picks up another important first down. The final yards are left to Nick Eddy. The speedster follows his interference into the end zone for the first score of the game. Notre Dame takes charge, seven to nothing. 63,000 watch another Irish March game momentum as Terry Hanratty spots Nick Eddy slanting across the middle. Eddy's to the Oklahoma 15. It's not long before the Irish are in close. Hanratty hanging on to the ball, rolls around the right side for the touchdown. Notre Dame has 10th ranked Oklahoma reeling to the tune of 14 to nothing. Following the kickoff, the Sooners try to move on the ground. Pete Duranco causes Ron Schatz to fumble and the Irish recover. But misfortune strikes Notre Dame on the very next play. And Rowdy passes to his number one target, Jim Seymour. Terry overshoots him, but more important, Seymour suffers an injury to his instep. It could prove to be a severe jolt to the Irish. Joe Azaro then kicks a 32-yard field goal that gives the Irish a 17-0 lead at halftime. In the third quarter, Notre Dame's Larry Conjar runs roughshod for 18 yards. Keep your eye on the blocking as Terry Hanratty decides to get in some legwork at the expense of the sagging Sooner defense. When the yards are hardest to come by, the Irish usually give the ball to Nick Eddy. Eddy blasts into the end zone for a second touchdown of the game. Notre Dame 24, Oklahoma nothing. The Sooners' desperate situation isn't helped any by Bob Warmack's hurried pass later in the period. Jim Smithberger picks off the pass and heads back the other way. Smithberger returns 42 yards. Personal foul penalty against Oklahoma moves the ball down to the Sooner nine-yard line. On the next play, Hanratty gives to the deep man who was Rocky Blyer. Blyer streaks for the touchdown that sends Notre Dame spiraling to a commanding 31 to nothing advantage. Later, Oklahoma is punting. A high snap from center leaves Tom Stidham with but one alternative. Tom runs with the ball and gets nowhere as the Irish take over on the Oklahoma 12. Coley O'Brien has come in to replace Terry Hanratty at quarterback for Notre Dame. He rolls left and then crashes into the end zone. Notre Dame scoring almost at will soars to a 38 to nothing lead over Oklahoma after three quarters. In the final quarter, Notre Dame's crushing defense plays havoc with the Sooners substitute quarterback Jim Berger dumping him for a loss. Berger keeps plugging away. His sideline toss is complete, but not to the intended receiver. Dan Harshman intercepts for the Irish. Notre Dame wins this battle of the unbeatens by a whopping 38 to nothing score, causing a Sooner lineman to comment, I thought for sure we were playing the Green Bay Packers. Notre Dame enters their annual scrap with Navy, boasting a 5-0 record and featuring a defense that has shut out their last three opponents. Ara Pasigian will be without injured split end Jim Seymour, but will be counting on Irish captain Jim Lynch to lead his classy defense against the wide-open midi attack. Lynch tops his team and tackles for the second year in a row. Notre Dame leads 3-0 late in the first quarter as Navy mounts an offensive. John Cartwright at the helm goes to the air. His pass is deflected and intercepted by John Pergene on Navy's 24-yard line. An argument ensues and a personal foul against the middies places the ball on the 12. The quarter ends. On the first play of the second period, Terry Hanratty gives the ball to Larry Conjar, who slams through the right side and into the end zone with the first touchdown, and the Irish take a 10 to nothing halftime lead. Third quarter action finds the nation's top team back on the attack. Rocky Blyer takes the football around the left side and picks his way through the Naval secondary for 22 yards. 
the tough Navy defense is forcing Notre Dame to a ground game. But Terry Hanratty is up to the task as he skirts left end to Navy's 15. From seven yards out, the Butler Pennsylvania star works the quarterback draw to the one yard line. One play later, Hanratty goes it all alone. Notre Dame shows why it's college football leading offensive array as the tally is raised 17 to nothing. The stunned future naval officers attempt to come back. John Cartwright on a bootleg rolls right to pass. But Cartwright throws his fourth interception of the afternoon with John Pergine on the receiving end. The junior linebacker reverses direction, picks his way to the middies 45. Terry Hanratty takes charge. He fakes once and pitches to Nick Eddy, Notre Dame's leading scorer. The flashy senior halfback charges forward as the Irish gather momentum. Staying with a successful ground game, Hanratty gives to sophomore Bob Gladio, who's replaced Eddy. Gladio spins forward for the first down. Hanratty, who hasn't thrown a single pass so far in the second half, keeps for another first down inside the five. There's no stopping the Irish now. Bob Gladio gets the handoff and powers across the goal line for the touchdown. The Irish now lead Navy 24 to nothing and are displaying good reason why they're second in the nation in scoring. In the final period, the Irish are forced to punch. Rocky Blyer's boot is blocked. Navy's John Bergner picks it up and falls into the end zone for a touchdown. Navy does what Army, North Carolina, and Oklahoma could not do prior to this game. Score on Notre Dame, but the middies trail 24 to seven. Following the kickoff, Larry Conjar breaks through Navy's forward wall. Conjar gallops 23 yards and into midi territory. From the 45, Hanratty stays on the ground. Bob Gladio takes the ball around the right side for 10 more yards. Larry Conjar gets the call again on a quick hitter through the middle. Conjar looks like he might go all the way, but he stopped six yards short. On the very next play, Terry Hanratty finds no room inside and decides to go outside. He stiff arms Navy's John McIntosh and flies across the goal line for the final score of the game. The rugged Notre Dame defense holds the midshipmen the rest of the way, and college football's number one team remains unbeaten and untied with a 31-7 romp over the Naval Academy. Midi coach Bill Elias calls Notre Dame the best college team I've ever seen. Pitt Panthers are the next visitors to Notre Dame Stadium and the gridiron target of 270-pound Irish defensive tackle Kevin Hardy. On offense, the top-ranked Irish will count on Larry Conjar to ring up the yardage against a struggling Panther team that has only one victory in seven games this season. Fifty-nine thousand gridiron fans are stunned by a scoreless first quarter. But early in the second period, the best offensive team in collegiate football gives them something to cheer about. Our slow motion camera follows Terry Hanratty on an end sweep. The highly publicized Irish quarterback gallops 15 yards and winds up well inside Panther territory. From the 42, Larry Conjar gets a big hole on the left side and barrels through for 12 more yards. Hanratty, playing without injured Jim Seymour again this week, romps to the five-yard line. The kingpin of the star-studded Notre Dame offensive machine decides to go for the final yards himself. Terry Hanratty finds daylight on the right side and scores the first touchdown of the game. Hanratty, noted mainly for a superb passing arm, culminates an 80-yard ground assault without throwing a single pass, and Notre Dame takes a 7-0 halftime lead. Third quarter action begins as Pittsburgh's Brad Littlehales kicks off. The kick is picked up by Nick Eddy on the 15. He breaks away from two pit defenders, and he's on his way. Dave Haley provides a key block to give Eddy plenty of running room. 
He outruns the last Panther in sight for the touchdown. It's an 85-yard kickoff return. That's an example of why Coach Arapasigian calls Eddie the best broken field runner he's ever coached. The Irish take a 13 to nothing advantage. The Irish pull away 21 to nothing. Following a slow first half, the Notre Dame offense continues to sparkle near the end of the third quarter. Sophomore Brian Stenger is on the receiving end of a 19-yard Hanratty pass. The quarter ends. Early in the final period, our slow motion camera rolls as Larry Conjar is called on to provide the six points. Last year, Notre Dame rolled up 69 points against Pitt and is again starting to pile it on. The count now reads 27 to nothing. Another Panther attack sputters. Al Zortia punts, but the ball sails out of bounds at the 20. The 12-yard boot puts Pittsburgh right back in trouble. The undefeated Irish have another golden scoring opportunity. Terry Hanratty goes to work. He throws a screen pass to Bob Gladio, who makes a shoestring catch. Behind excellent blocking, this sophomore halfback takes dead aim on the end zone. Gladio eludes three men and charges over the goal line for the touchdown. The conversion is missed, but Notre Dame pulls away 33 to nothing. The Irish have given up only 28 points all season and show one reason why. Defensive specialist Dave Martin gets the ball for the offense and Notre Dame is in scoring position again. Coley O'Brien comes in at quarterback. The give is to Bob Gladio, who is forced to run wide. He wins the race to the end zone and scores Notre Dame's final touchdown of the game. The Irish rock to a 40 to nothing win over Pittsburgh. Seven in a row for Notre Dame as they begin to think about Michigan State two weeks away. The Irish are highly favored as they take the field against the upset-minded Duke Blue Devils. Providing the muscle to help prevent an upset is Notre Dame captain and linebacker Jim Lynch. Quarterback Terry Hanratty will have his favorite target, Jim Seymour, back in the lineup after a two-week absence. The full house is just settling down when Nick Eddy speeds into the Duke secondary. The All-America candidate makes it look easy as he robs 77 yards to score with less than a minute gone by. The Irish gamble on a two-point conversion. The power of Larry Conjar is enough on a straight-ahead drive, and Notre Dame leads 8 to nothing. The Blue Devils try to strike back quickly, but a Larry Davis aerial finds the wrong hands. John Horney steals it for the Irish, starts his return trip, and decides he needs help. Tom O'Leary grabs the lateral, completes the 55-yard jaunt, and Irish eyes are smiling to the tune of seven more points, with Notre Dame now ahead 15 to nothing. After the defense scores, it's time for Terry and the offensive Pirates to take over. Lowry Conjar takes Hanratty's pass for a first down in Blue Devil territory. Notre Dame fans wondering about Jim Seymour's ankle can breathe easier as the 6'4 sophomore is back in form. This is the first Hanratty to Seymour completion in three weeks and it sets up a touchdown. The fourth member of Notre Dame's dream backfield, Rocky Blyer, cracks through a big hole and scores standing up. The nation's top-rated team leads Duke 22 to nothing. In the second period, Hanratty fakes a throw to his right, then pegs on the mark to Blyer, and the Irish are threatening to roll it up. The pass protection gives Hanratty time to write a book, but the sophomore cover boy is satisfied to author a touchdown heave to Blyer, covering 45 yards. And Notre Dame's advantage is now 29 to nothing. Watch number 81, Alan Page, step over a blocker and wrestle down the Blue Devil quarterback before he can throw. This Irish defense is tops in the country, allowing an average of only four points a game. Watch punts like this one by Dave Martin set up the big green in scoring territory.
Notre Dame's forward wall opens the hole, and Larry Conjar somersaults into the end zone with another six-pointer. Still in the first half, Ara Pesigian's scoring machine boasts a 36 to nothing lead. Terry Hanratty draws the headlines for his passing, but the talented teenager can also pick running room and turn on the speed. His 48-yard sprint has Duke again in trouble. And Hanratty upset that he didn't score. Near the end of their first season, Irish fans are already comparing Hanratty and Seymour with such famed pairs as Blue Jack to Brennan, Williams to Hart, and Dewart to Snow. This TD makes it 43 to nothing. Duke opens up the third period with quarterback Larry Davis pitching wildly to his halfback and the chase is on. Ron Jazorski scoops up the loose ball and gains possession for Notre Dame. Coach Persegian is clearing his bench. Reserve Dave Haley falls into pay dirt and the Irish are coasting with a 50 to nothing margin. Again, Fumbleitis strikes the Devils, or maybe they're worrying about that big Notre Dame line crashing in. Either way, it's Irish ball with Harry Alexander getting credit for the recovery. Foley O'Brien is leading this drive. The stop fakes beautifully into the middle, then rolls out around left end for Notre Dame's eighth touchdown. And the Irish have a 57 0 lead over Duke after three periods. Tops in the nation in scoring with a 33.9 average. Notre Dame adds some more. Frank Kennedy finds running room and dives the final yards to give the Irish an amazing 60 foot or nothing victory over Duke. Notre Dame's coach Parsegia leaves the field wishing he could save a few of the scores for next week's showdown with Michigan State. Notre Dame, Michigan State the most anticipated, publicized, and discussed collegiate football game of the decade has finally arrived. Duffy Dougherty's undefeated and number two ranked Spartans clash head on with Ara Persegian's undefeated and number one ranked Fighting Irish for the National Collegiate Championship. In the first quarter, Irish quarterback Terry Hanratty rolls away from the onrushing Spartans and completes a peg to Bob Gladio. But now fate plays a trick on Hanratty and Notre Dame. As the Irish passer turns the corner, big number 95, Bubba Smith, slams him down, causing a shoulder separation and forcing Coach Parsegian to go with Coley O'Brien at quarterback. After halting the Irish attack, Jimmy Ray and the Spartans take charge. Ray hits State's all-time top pass receiver, Gene Washington, on a 42-yard completion as the first period comes to an end. Camped on the Notre Dame 20, Ray calls on Regis Cavender, filling in for the injured Bob Apisa. Cavender plows through for 11 more yards. Three plays later, our slow motion camera rolls as a sophomore fullback is asked to get the final yards. Regis Cavender falls into the end zone for the game's first touchdown. It's only the second time all season that Notre Dame has trailed an opponent. The Spartans move on top, seven to nothing. The battle of the undefeated Giants continues later in the second quarter. Jimmy Ray, unable to find a receiver open, turns on his tremendous speed. The junior scrambler gathers blockers and dents the formidable Irish defense for 30 yards. The Spartans are second in the nation in rushing and show why as their offensive line provides plenty of running room for Dwight Lee. Mixing his plays well, Ray elects to throw the ball. But All-America candidate Jim Lynch intercepts. A ferocious tackle by Clint Jones causes the Notre Dame captain to fumble, and Michigan State recovers. It's a big break for the Spartans. The Big Ten champions are most noted for their ground attack, but Jimmy Ray is a constant aerial threat, having completed better than 50% of his passes this year. He adds another 17-yarder to Gene Washington. But collegiate football's third best defensive unit halts the drive, forcing a field goal attempt. Dick Kennedy's 47-yard boot is good, and Michigan State jumps out to a 10-0 lead, much to the dismay of Ara Persegian. 
Coley O'Brien is more of a rollout passer than Hanratty. Bob Gladio is open in this 11-yard toss, and the Irish are fighting back. Notre Dame has averaged 37 points per game this year and is not going to be kept down for long. O'Brien connects with Rocky Blyer to move nine yards closer to Pater. On a second down one situation, the 19-year-old quarterback rifles a touchdown pass to Gladio. And Notre Dame finally lights up the scoreboard. The top scoring team in the country gets close 10 to 7. Let's take a closer look with our isolated camera. Bob Gladio charges past Jess Phillips to make the catch. It's Coley O'Brien's first TD pass of the year and pulls Notre Dame to within three points at halftime. Near the end of the third quarter, Notre Dame is back on the march. Coley O'Brien passes complete to Rocky Blyer for nine yards. The Irish, finding it hard to crack the state forward wall, stays in the air. Larry Conjar grabs this O'Brien pass for 18 more yards. From midfield, the McLean, Virginia youngster looks to pass again. He spots Dave Haley on the sideline, 23 yards away. Haley makes the catch, and the Irish are getting close. A few plays later, Notre Dame faces a critical third down play. O'Brien wants to pass for the all-important first down, but he's rushed and must flee the pocket. A highly tatted Michigan State defense closes in and spills O'Brien for no gain. Now fourth down with three yards to go as the third quarter ends. On the first play of the final period, the Irish elect to go for the field goal. Joe Azaro's 28-yard attempt is good, and that ties the score at 10. It's the battle of defenses in the fourth quarter. Jimmy Ray tries to pass his Michigan State team to victory near the end of the game, but Tom Shane intercepts for Notre Dame. It's Shane's second interception of the game, and he returns this one 31 yards to the Spartan 18. It's a golden opportunity for the Irish as their fans go wild. Coley O'Brien calls on Dave Haley, but the junior halfback is caught in a Spartan blitz for an eight-yard loss. Unable to move the ball in three downs, Joe Azaro tries to win the game with a 41-yard field goal. It's long enough, but wide to the right. The collegiate football game of the decade ends in a 10-10 tie. It's a tremendous letdown for everyone as the long-awaited clash of giants fails to produce a winner. The Irish now have a chance for their first undefeated season since 1953 as they journey to the Los Angeles Coliseum to meet Southern California. Notre Dame's scoring pace is making them second only to Newt Rockney's 1921 team at producing points. After last week's tie, Notre Dame needs an impressive win to strengthen their bid for a national championship. The Trojans are 7-2 and, and are heading for the Rose Bowl. Coley O'Brien will lead the Irish again today with Terry Hanratty still sidelined. Jim Seymour takes this aerial on the USC 43. The Irish call on Larry Conjar to give them another big first down. No sooner said than done by this hard-hitting fullback. Again, the handoff goes to Conjar, who runs to daylight for the first score of the game. Notre Dame takes an early 7-0 lead over the West Coast champion. One of the keys to Notre Dame's success has been its outstanding pass defense. Trojan quarterback Toby Page hoists a pass that's short-circuited by Tom Shane of the Irish. Timely blocking enables Shane to return with the interception for 40 yards and a touchdown. The Irish head into the second quarter, leading the day's Trojans by a 14-0 score. Coley O'Brien is doing a fine job filling in for Hanratty. The poised sophomore finds Larry Conjar open at the USC 22. When the Trojans fail to yield any more ground, Joe Azaro slams home a field goal from 28 yards out to give Notre Dame a 17-0 advantage. After USC surrenders the ball on downs, Coley O'Brien and Jim Seymour proceed to make merry at the expense of the Trojan secondary. Jim Seymour, the pro scout, say, has it all. Size, speed, good moves, sure hands, and a competitive spirit. 
Seymour works his way open in the end zone. O'Brien spots him, and Notre Dame has another touchdown. The Irish are riding high with a 24-0 lead over Southern Cal. A short punt by USC gives the Irish good position at the Trojan 39. Coley O'Brien wastes no time in going for the ball. Jim Seymour makes a spectacular reception. Notre Dame rolls up a 31-0 margin at halftime. In the third quarter, following a recovery by Notre Dame of a USC fumble, Coley O'Brien lofts a 23-yard pass to Dan Harshman, who's behind everyone for the touchdown. The Irish knew they had to play this one to the hilt, and so far they've done just that, leading 38-0. Number 47, Nick Eddy, voted Notre Dame's most valuable player this season, shows why he's hard to stop. Same play, same ball carrier. Nick Eddy, whose great rushing talents have moved him to Notre Dame's top 10 all-time ground gainers, smashes into the end zone, and the Irish own an insurmountable 44-0 lead after three quarters. In the final quarter, USC's Steve Soggs has his pass stolen by Notre Dame linebacker Dave Martin, who returns 33 yards for a touchdown. The mighty Irish stay unbeaten with a 51-0 route of USC for that team's worst defeat in history. Notre Dame, highest scoring team in the nation, with a record of nine victories, six of them via the shutout route, is crowned national champion. By maxing Arapasigian's best year at South Bend, Indiana. Watch his oil and on the train of roll And stop the charge of fighting men And stop the train of fighting men